Hello, everyone. Welcome to the this, this Safety Third Podcast. Today is a very special episode because we're sitting on a forklift on an old chair from a car. <laughs> I actually really like this. This is, no. this is a really good crazy. idea. Can, uh, you, can you guess where it is? I'll give you three seconds. Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I've always wanted to go there. <laughs> can you see any of the stickers? No. Oh, they're on like they're on the sides. We're at Dang. Mr. Beast's office. Garage with special thing. guest, not Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> you want to I'm such a letdown. TikTok, TikTok superstar, we can Emily. Get Mr. Beast. Oh, God. The engineer. Oh, no. Is Welcome. this the awkward part where I say what I do? Yeah, you do can I, say what you do. I don't know. I mean, you can make us describe what you do, too, but okay. that's probably going to be worse. Than... Actually, I'm, I kind of want to hear that. Okay. Yeah, do uh, that. She, makes, she does Fortnite dances on TikTok. Oh, God, please, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> Go back. Go back. <laughs> I want me to keep going, or you want to explain yourself? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I 3D print stuff, and then I... Iron Man suits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortnite Most dances in it. I try not to because people already say, <laughs> oh, it's the guy from Fortnite. And I'm just like, <laughs> it, really? It, it, it's no, it's, no, it's I, Iron I mean, they Man. Have Iron Man in Fortnite. And so they all say, <laughs> no. oh, it's they, the guy from no. Fortnite. Has, it makes me want to leave the platform. What? That has to be a joke. No, I swear. It's not a joke? It's not a joke at all. It's no. not a joke. It's just four year old children. That's yeah, that, that, that's pretty yeah. much what it is. Or like 40 year old guys in their mom's basement trying to Troll. tick me off. Yeah. Mm. Does it work? Hello. I've kind of gotten used to it You're now. You're talking about it right now, so maybe. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, but it still pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> you need to just poke your hair out, out of the Iron Man mask. So oh, it already know. does. You've either got a <laughs> long beard or <laughs> long hair. I'll pull it together like... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> good. Enough. Seven days where like, the hair is covering the face of the horror movie where it's like... Yeah. It's like, but yeah. it's, it's like an Iron Man face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hair already sticks out of it everywhere. People yeah. always ask me, they're like, how do you keep your hair inside of it? I'm like, it, it just doesn't. Oh. I, li I try my best, and then it doesn't. Could you Fortnite dance in an Iron Man suit? I could, but I feel like I'm already, I already post enough cringe content <laughs> as is. I don't need to dig the hole deeper for myself. <laughs> I feel like that might actually do well. Maybe. I think so. Well, is it worth it, it though? Is it know. worth the views? I don't know. I, I try every time we try flossing. I don't know how to do it. No. I can floss. Do you, you can actually floss? how do you do? Well, I'm. Uh, you go. How do you, you do? You go it? like this, uh, and then tuck this arm behind you. And then you and tuck, tuck the other arm. Do you ever go? No, I feel like we're gonna end up in a flossing competition right now. So it's only every other. So it's like yeah. Front every other. Yeah. Can you show us? Yeah, I'll try. I'll try my best. And we, I don't knock my PBR down. It's actually really fitting for a, a forklift. <laughs> like this? Yeah, and then one, oh, no, like, 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 put one, yeah, there you go. And then, like, go. And switch. <laughs> and then put that arm behind here. No, but swing the hips out. the other way when you do that. <laughs> yes, oh, I don't know how you, you swing the hips. I don't. Yeah, but you really got different ways. <laughs> I always end up like that, too. It's like a, a little pendulum. <laughs> See, you know I, that I think I can do it, but I'm not trying because I don't want to look like that. That was perfect. I, I don't know what you're wanna... talking about. I look cool. You, you, you do look cool. Yeah. You do look cool. You could barely see I was moving so fast, you could hardly see me. Actually, this is pretty sharp, too. I almost cut my femoral artery. Whoa. Actually, no, they're not sharp at all. Oh, my God. The what? forklift I used to drive had, like, razor blades. It was, like, all worn down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drag on the ground, yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Um, have you ever driven a forklift? No, not at all. What about you guys? I have. Multiple times, I'm not allowed. Was it in here by any chance? No, it wasn't. I tried, but I couldn't work it out. Do you need a key for this? One? Yeah. Well, that's why. The key's in it. Yeah. The what we had one. Is it actually? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sick. Do you want me to drive it now when you guys um, are on it? That's uh, like there's a sticker on the front. Like, that's this the is first thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> I, I um, forklifts are pretty bad. They're easy to drive, but they're dangerous. They are very easy to drive. Um, I I used to drive one at my old work. I got certified. And it's fun. It's really weird to drive them because they're rear wheel drive, rear wheel steering. And so you end up mm. with like a really like kind of bizarre driving experience. And it's very easy to like do something bad. <laughs> so you have yeah. to be careful. <laughs> Knocks over entire shelf of yeah. boxes. Yeah, exactly. Like it's really sensitive. So if you like steer too aggressively while going too fast, you can kind of swing the whole back out. And bad no, because they weigh like 10,000 pounds, don't they? But the back, the back wheels turn. And so if you turn them really aggressively, like the whole vehicle will just like change direction super yeah. rapidly. Oh, okay. It's weird. It's like, you think it'd be similar to driving a car. Oh, I see. No, yeah, really the back not. wheels. But it is, by yeah. back wheel drive, you mean the back wheels. The back wheels turn. Oh, that's confusing. Yeah, that's I didn't realize pivot. That. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're not steering from the front. You're you need to kind of think of it like you're driving like a trolley in a shopping yeah. cart almost. Where yeah. it's, yeah, like that. 
Imagine taking a car and driving in reverse the whole time. Yeah, that's it's weird. Yeah, it's really, really weird. God. With giant like tusks yeah. on the front, yeah. <laughs> like that you can murder people. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucking great. But like, there's like certain rules. You like, you can't leave the. You don't want to leave the forks up in a position where you can like hit stuff. Like they, they, they have to be, like on the ground is the safest. Because like sometimes people. <laughs> Unlike park they them. are now. Yeah, like yeah. If, we, if we left this here like this and like took the bench off it, that'd be bad. You'd be like yeah. people would run into it. And oh yeah, like hit yeah. their knees right on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But they made us watch a training video, um, and it was really, really like horrendously stupid because it's all like special effects but very poorly done and they people get like stabbed and skewered and they have all sorts of like graphic gore is that like the shake hands with danger <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. And it's like it's like you know like an old white man narrating it yeah. kind of thing and there was one where i think they had a forklift made and it was like on a golf cart chassis or something but the top of the forklift was like clearly like pvc or wood and oh. they had it like flip over, so it was like a forklift meant to flip over for their their gore video. And yeah, it's just it was it's funny. I think there's some videos online you can watch some of these. There's fucked up. I almost got crushed using a forklift by a 700 kilo jumping castle because I was putting it into a truck, and it didn't go all the way in. So I thought, oh, I will stand underneath the yeah. the crate that's on the on the lift oh. and push. And I started pushing, but it went halfway into the truck snapped down and then the jumping castle started rolling towards me uh but luckily i got out of the way, of the way. So of it's there. either you you follow so it would have like pinned snatch. you up against the machine i would have been fucked i would have got pinned against the fucking forks oh yeah it's bad but that's why you have quick reflexes yeah yeah, yeah. When you're in a factory, <laughs> just don't works. die exactly. <laughs> you'll be fine you could have not been here today imagine that's how you die too what a stupid <laughs> lame way to die <laughs> Just crushed by a jumping <laughs> castle. <laughs> a bounce house. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I did a bunch of myself. You just end up in work safety videos for the rest of your life. Yeah. I know. It's like not even a cool way to die by a fork. Your family either. doesn't even get money for the footage of you getting smushed by a bouncy castle. Mm -hmm. Unless it's on YouTube. So we'll see. <laughs> now, 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 you could monet, now you could add it to the channel. Yeah, yeah. I could do it. Ten million views. It'd probably be great for my channel for like a month. Yeah. And then I would just be dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People are like, oh, that wasn't a joke video. He's actually dead. <laughs> I remember we got a really big forklift once for lifting something really heavy. And it was so heavy and the load was so heavy that when we picked it up, all the wheels sunk like six inches into the into the asphalt parking lot. No way. Mm -hmm. Like asphalt mm -hmm. parking lot. Right, like it it legit... went right through the asphalt. What? It was it was actually terrifying. <laughs> what were you like, lifting with it? Like a big trailer or something at my old job. I wasn't driving it, yeah. but just watching it. It was like a big forklift. And like, I know they've done one. Like these things are so bad. Cause you ever seen the videos where they try to use like two forklifts? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. It's, it's like, like one on either yeah. side of something and pick it up. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's the kind of stuff where you're just like, now you're in like the, <laughs> the danger territory. You're shaking like, hands with danger. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, heavy equipment sucks. Like it's so easy it's to cool, use it. Though. It's cool. But, it's cool. Yeah, we but were talking about it. Like we couldn't, like if we had a warehouse like this, I could not be trusted with this no. machine. I would be, I would just like drive it through a wall. Just <laughs> like, it's so much power. It'd like, be so much fun. You could just flip I, over everything. I feel like I can't even like, back like a boat into a dock kind of thing. So I don't think you could really trust me. <laughs> that sounds hard. Like, uh, the extra bonus should be, Teaching you guys how to drive a fork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not not teaching, just Emily trying to use it. Yeah, just, just, try, just all you have to do is record me. It'll be funny. I don't know. <laughs> there's, a, there's definitely enough space. All you have to do is just don't accidentally hold down the gas pedal. You That's could, like the worst thing. Yeah. <laughs> you could drive Mr. Beast's Lamborghini too. That that would be sick. It's It'd a be a, an improvement from my current situation. <laughs> it's a tractor. <laughs> yeah, this is a tractor. The tractor. AC works, I'm sure. <laughs> Last time we were here, I think we started it. And we got in it, and we figured out how to start it, but I was too scared to drive it. It'd be loud. Yeah. It'd be really, I bet you it would be loud as hell. It was, I mean, the cab, it's inside. It's nice on the inside. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I just feel like we're so used to using, like, not heavy equipment. You know, like you yeah. do a bunch of 3D printing. I mean, I have, like, I have yeah, a bunch of printers no. as well. It's nothing that will, like, cut your hands off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you really wanted to. Like, if you were. You'd have to try. You'd have to try, but. Like my old job, we had a water jet, and. You, there's a lot of machines that are like kind of safe you know like a laser it's like oh the door's got to be closed mm -hmm. but the water jet uh the problem is when you start cutting big pieces of metal like like there's like stress in the sheet sometimes and so once it fully cuts something out it can like cause the sheet to like flex up lasers can i guess do this too mm -hmm. and so then the nozzle is like you know like pretty close to the material and so if the material flexes up and hits the, the machine will just crash into it mm -hmm. and so what you would do is 
you would get your <laughs> you'd get your hands kind of like in there to, to hold the pieces and sometimes pull them out if they're too small. Yeah. And it's fine because it cuts slow. But also there's warnings all over the thing saying not to stick your fingers in there. And it's like because it's like when it, you're trying to like pull the piece out maybe before it like yeah. goes in the grates or something. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's like I would compare it to using a bandsaw, right? Or like a jigsaw where you kind of have your fingers in there. Yeah. But it's still like. I don't know, like, yeah. everyone's like, oh, it's got to be perfectly safe, but that's definitely not perfectly safe. Are water jets actually that dangerous? Is it kind of like an oscillating saw that it will go through flesh oh, yeah. the same as metal? It will go right through your hand. Really? Yeah. It's bad. Okay, It's so, really bad. Whoa. So, like, it's like 60,000 PSI. Some of the, actually, I think the bigger ones might be more, but the one we used was like 60, maybe 40. I don't know. It's like, it's a huge electric motor, like a, like a. Tens of horsepower. I think it was like a 50 horsepower electric motor, 40 horsepower electric motor, which is like, that's a lot of horsepower for electric, but that's a big yeah. ass motor. All of that like concentrated into a little stream. Yeah. It looks like the like uh, motors you see on like a roller coaster to lift the car up mm. the track. Mm. And it's just hidden inside of this like box. And then there's three pistons, at least the, the machines that I've seen. That's what I've, I've seen the cutaways too. Yeah, yeah, it's like ceramic pistons. Like graphite yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. And it just, wild. it like, pumps the water through like this tiny tiny they like, use sand as well hose. don't they like an abrasive yeah. mixed with it yeah. so the, the water gets uh like pressurized to like sixty thousand psi it goes through this line this like flexible line that like has to get to like the moving head so it's got a huge like you know um service loop basically <laughs> and then it goes down into the machine and then there's a the sand that gets like kind of air piped in it uses air to like kind of flush it through the system and it fills the reservoir up and then it slowly dumps sand into the uh, stream so like right at the nozzle or something or yeah so the water comes through the metal pipe 60,000 psi and then it comes down to a nozzle which has like a little piece of ruby in it and then that ruby is the orifice that essentially has to deal with like the horrific oh, pressure, abrasive. yeah, the abrasive action. And then once the water leaves the ruby nozzle, then sand gets put in. That oh. sand actually is, I think it is ruby. It is like aluminum oxide or okay. something. Yeah, like that. yeah. Well. And then it just goes through anything. Like literally it will go People. through anything. Like if you want to cut ruby, guess what you use? A water jet. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I recently found out how expensive it is to just to use one. Yeah. Like the consumable really? sand, yeah. Like you know, for an hour, like getting to use it for an hour. Number one, like a small part to cut out a small part would take like easily an hour or two, and it's yeah. like fifteen bucks an hour in, in the cost of abrasive or yes. something like yeah. that. Yeah, the consumable. Surely they re recycle the abrasive. Um, I don't think they can. Kind of, not really. Does no. it just like go everywhere? Once I think it, it just breaks down too too fine. Oh my god, you guys want to learn about water jet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it mixes with like metal powder, and so. I've I've had the opportunity, the horrible opportunity of digging out the water jet. They sell systems that are supposed to like clean them out, but like when they fill up with abrasive and metal powders, it just creates this like quicksand at the oh, bottom. It's probably like a cake of rust yes. too. Yeah. yeah. You just it's, gotta like clean it yeah, out every now dig and again. It out. So oh, like every no. couple of years when it would fill up, because we didn't do a whole lot, the shop didn't do a ton of water jet cutting, so it wasn't worth the money to have the whole like system to clear it out. They ended up yeah. getting it, but it still apparently didn't work super well. Um, so they would drain the water out. Then you would get in and it would take an entire day of shoveling oh, to get nasty. all because it was like this Just horrible, three. super dense sand. And it's gray and metallic from all the metal like particles. Yeah. In the sand. How often do you have to do that? Like, it, was how, like it, it was every couple of years, I think. Oh, so, oh OK. OK. So not so bad. Did Did you guys see that video going back to heavy machinery of um who was it? David Dobrik throwing his friends around oh, with, the, with the excavator. With the excavator. Yeah. Oh, were they like holding onto the bucket as yeah, he spun I never saw the video, but I, I, I heard about it. That I can't sick. watch stuff like that. That doesn't seem that dangerous, right? It's 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 not usually that bad because usually people don't stop suddenly. But I don't think they had long enough rope. And then he's doing it, and he stops when when one of his mates was in the air. So he just flies into the actual fucking oh. shovel of the excavator and cracks his face open. Wait, so he, they had him like on the end of the shovel and they were like spinning him in a circle? I think they had him on a rope holding on to the attached to the end of the shovel. Yeah. He was spinning that around and then he just stopped suddenly while he was Oh, and he here. went he went back around. And then he just continued, yeah, kind of wrapped up, got tighter and then flew into oh. it or something. Like, yeah, I feel like of all the dangerous stuff we do, like that's something that throws up huge red flags of like, like you're talking serious amounts of energy. Like anytime yeah. you, you can move something that easily, that's that heavy, like you're asking uh, for trouble. Just, yeah. Of all the people that you could have swinging around in a forklift too, I'd probably, <laughs> I feel like I trust Kevin. <laughs> I, mean, I trust right. Peter. I think Peter would be pretty yeah. good at swing? operating. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I would trust myself to be the person being swung. Yeah. I would not trust David Dobrik to be the one swinging me around. <laughs> David Dobrik. David Dobrik. 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 No, no, no. David Doobie. No, no, neither. Because yeah. you know that he wants to fuck you up because he gets more views. <laughs> yeah, you're he's like, he is like, I mean, that's my brain now. Like, I don't think he did it intentionally, but I think he probably had no idea like how serious of a problem. He probably had no idea how much power was yeah. behind that right. was, just, was like, he the one driving though he was driving okay. yeah it's like who thinks this is a good idea to give david yeah. derbrick that's like like getting on the forklift like the idea of like like being on this and like li sitting on it and having the forklift lift up gives yeah. me like the heebie-jeebies because it's it just like like that's bad like there's so many things that can go wrong like you can tip it yeah. forward on accident if you grab the wrong yeah. stick and tip it like you're yeah. probably not going to dump us but like you might get like a oh shit and then you like yeah. put more energy into yeah. the chair and then it like falls off when it starts rocking like mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Especially when there's just concrete ground. Yeah. Even the smallest floor, uh, fall, you can just get fucked. Yeah. You can just oh, die. Yeah. Like, you no. can just die so easily. I'd rather irradiate myself than go up on a forklift chair. <laughs> Chelsea would. And I do. I do regularly irradiate myself. <laughs> oh, there goes my PBR. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the most dangerous thing I've ever done. I feel like it's always heavy equipment. I think it's the heavy equipment. That scares me the most. Ever or kind of science related? I don't know. Something that made me nervous, like really nervous. Maybe high voltage. What's the heaviest equipment that you've had to like use? Was it like just something a, like a the water jet? Clip. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The water jet is probably yeah. the biggest. There was a giant um, press. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, we saw. Uh, did, who went to the shop the other day? I went to the shop. I went to the yeah. shop. And saw the, the giant press. Uh, press. It's like a brake press, like big. Yeah, like ones. a huge one. It's like the press size. Break. Like take. God, how big was that? I'm trying to describe it. It's really, massive. it's massive. Yeah, yeah you like, could put like a almost like I think like an eight foot wide piece of sheet metal in yeah, it and bend, bend the whole thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, but there was this one machine. It was it was I don't know if it was the brand of the machine name called the Piranha, and it was a like a hinge break. So there was like a huge hinge on the backside, and then two steel hardened steel blades that would come down like like one would come down like scissors, and the other was stationary. Mm -hmm. If you were to like put your finger in there, it would literally not even know your finger was there. Yeah, like <laughs> actually, we had we had something like that where I co-opted and like we were not allowed to touch it because mm -hmm. it, it would just slice through was that the and kind you could for put, cutting metal yeah yeah like you could oh, cut yeah. you could like cut half inch steel with it like you could punch circles like the back had a punch and you could put like a you know like an inch die or half inch die you could mm -hmm. go like right through like half inch steel like it would just boop, pop at, at least a machine like that has a rule where you're like don't ever put my hand past this line mm -hmm. you just know that mm -hmm. it's kind of just like yeah never do that and when you're doing like dozens of something where you have to pop a bunch of holes and you're just mm, and you like have a foot pedal thing yeah and so you're just like i could imagine if you were doing that eight hours a day instead oh of my just god like something could happen if something gets caught you just be like oh yeah. i'll move that yeah. and then just yeah whole just arm get gone. caught up in the routine yeah of, oh, yep yeah because I, I used to draw like lines on sheet metal and get like other people to like go mm -hmm. and cut it for me and they would just kind of was there a reason nobody was allowed to use that machine at your job or I, I, was there I like a, an that. incident? For, I hope not, but like. Did you cut someone's arm off? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank God. That would, uh, it was close. <laughs> Shh. No, we're fine. Yeah, because I, I love the idea of having a shop like that with mm -hmm. a bunch of heavy equipment, but it also I just. Mm, no. Too I, much work. I made a rule where I'm never going to get like a lathe that could tear me apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'll get one that maybe could just. Pull yeah. a finger off. Yeah. But I don't want to be able to die from my tool because yeah. I will do something you, stupid. Yeah, yeah, I'm stupid enough with my small Yeah, Because I know it can't, like, there's nothing really that dangerous no, no. about it. But yeah. if it's, like, more than, like, one horsepower, it's dangerous. It could pull like, you in. It's actually dangerous. Well, mine's, mine's one horsepower. Well, yeah, I mean, that's fine, though. <laughs> have you ever seen, like, a full-size lathe spin up with, like, a big piece of material in it? Yeah. It's, it's Oh, yeah, like, something chonky yeah. on it, and it's, and it's just, like, swinging everywhere. And it's oh, like, yeah. yeah. Or if it's CNC, too, and it just starts, like, going faster, and you're like, oh, the. yeah. Like, all it has to do is just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just imagine the jaw is slightly open. Yes. And, this, and it just, like, the instant it starts <laughs> yeah. going, it's going to... Yeah, and it's uh -huh. just, <laughs> rip out of the holster, like... I uh, I don't know. That's why I like printing. I like printing. I like little CNC <laughs> routers. Like I like uh, Jake Laser's Tormach. It's like oh, reasonably yeah. sized. Yeah, that's good. Do you do any other stuff, or is it mostly yeah. just printing? It's mostly printing. I want to get into other stuff, mm -hmm. but like I just don't have the space for it now. Like I've got like twelve printers shoved in a tiny little bedroom. Oh my god! And that, that's that's what I got. So we gotta get a garage. How are the fumes? Uh, I've got an air filter in okay. there for the resin stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, everyone's like, resin. everyone always like sees that it's in a tiny room, and they're like, everyone in the comments gets oh. so triggered. They're like, 
are you breathing it in? And yeah, I'm like, nobody used to say no. anything about that. And then like one story came out that said something and it was, it was Find like only partially matter. true or something. People get so worked up yeah. over it. But like resin, like you don't want to breathe it in, but I have like air filters, like, you know, stationed there and stuff like that to make up for the fact that like it's a room. Yeah. So we're full of microplastics anyways, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like we're already <laughs> full of it. Like what was everyone with 3D printing? I mean, they're supposedly inert. Guys, like, let me breathe the fumes in, guys. I don't care. Here's what you should do. You should take the filters and then scrape the residue off the filters and, and put it into tea and bags. <laughs> yes. And just, like, steep I, it in the I water. So many. <laughs> I'm not breathing it, guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I have people, like, yelling at me in the comments sometimes for just printing with PLA. Like, PLA. People What's are wrong like, with PLA? Exactly. People are like, you know, the fumes from those. Are like, not, I'm like, okay. If there's something if wrong with it, don't tell me. you're going to yell at me, me yell at me for the resin printer. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. PLA. What do you I do? hate yeah. red. Do you use the resin printers a lot? I do. I hate them. It's so messy. It's really bad. It's like, I go through, I feel like I go through, like, six pairs of gloves every time I try to do oh, something. Oh, I do. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you touch uh, even a little bit of resin, and then you have to go, like, touch the bottle. Now the bottle's covered in resin, and it's yeah. like. Just I have like, oh, yeah. I like mounted like a paper towel holder like yeah. above my station. Mm -hmm. I'm just constantly yeah. like ripping it off. It's so bad. It's How do you? Really uh, what do you print with resin? Normally? Like more like more like detailed pieces and stuff like that. Mm. So that or say things I don't want to spend time sanding because mm. that's mm. a lot of work. So that's true. I don't know. I have a giant resin printer I haven't used yet. It's like yeah. how big is it? Uh, it's a Pio Poly. Phenom, I think it's called. It's like 11 inches by 8 inches. It's like the, really? it's the size of a piece of printer paper. Oh, yeah. shoot. It's huge. It holds like a couple gallons of resin. It, yeah, it, just to like even cover the, like to fill a vat, you probably have to put two bottles, like two liters. Yeah, in that's the worst it. part about the big yeah. ones. It's like you end up like dunking mm -hmm. all the resin in there. and then. But the, the coolest part about the big ones or like resin in general is that it takes the same time to print no matter how many parts you have on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just a height thing. So the only uh, thing that determines the time is the height. Yeah, I've Why? done that. The, laze, the light is in, it comes the, the out whole, instantly. Yeah. The whole layer. Yeah, I'll like throw like as much as I can on the Whoa. build plate, mm -hmm. just because I'm like, might as well go ahead and print it if it's going to take the same amount of time. You know. How long does it take? I've never used one. It's fast. It, it's pretty really? fast. I mean, I've never had a resin print take more than 24 hours. But then again, I'm not mm -hmm. like. I mean, that's how long a like a big 3D print will. But like, if, if you you're know. printing something like that tall. If you took one like, of the the discs for the. Uh, um, the thing we're working on right now. So it's like we're talking like maybe yeah. nine yeah. inches like, like wider than it is tall. Yeah, so if you put that on the resin printer I have completely flat, it could probably do it in like an hour or two. Yeah, like if it's flat. Hours, yeah. Okay. Well, so, so the shorter, that, the closer That would be to like 24 plate. hours maybe. That these... Yeah. Those or at least like 12 hours. On a FDM, I think mine is like nine hours. Yeah. Yeah. So well. you could do a nine hour part in like less than two hours, I think. Yeah, but then you've got like the resin. I don't know if you'd want like a resin gear like that to be Probably really not. brittle in it. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, that work, but what's yeah, the holdup for the resin? Like, why? How could you make it faster? I don't really know. Like, what's why can't they just go like whoop? like why can't it just pull the print out basically as is exposing it? Like, is it like have to expose it for like a couple minutes per layer? The layers have to dry, for, right? You can't have a soggy layer cure, before you. Yeah. So I think one thing I've seen is they can take uh, if they use mono like black and white LCDs. Mm -hmm. So instead of using the RGB LCD, they can get black and white ones. Okay. And it's like three or four times faster or something like that. Cause they get rid of the color filters. You know, like the phantoms, like the high speed cameras, the black and white ones are faster than, yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. So essentially you can get more light through the LCD that's blocking. Oh, light. that makes sense. Yeah. What about laser? Um, that might work too. It's more expensive though, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the LCD is like, there's no moving parts. Laser might be too powerful. Like it might kind yeah. of penetrate, and when when it hits something, really and like the area around it might all cure too. Mm. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of stuff that they have done to improve. I think I, I'm guessing that like the supply chain for like a black and white LCD or like an LCD that doesn't have color filters on it, um, it just doesn't exist because who's buying black and white displays, mm. right? <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. And so the 3D print industry is probably the one who's like paying for that pipeline. And oh, now, yeah. if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Because yeah, they're yeah. probably just actually buying displays from companies that already make displays. They're not making them themselves. You know what um, technology I can't wait for is... Uh, Sex 3D. robots. Well, that. <laughs> but you could make this, them with that. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, 3D printing um, laser. Laser. Oh, like metal. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, that would God. just be game changing. I love it. You could just print 
anything I, I in bet home. in like 10 years, everybody, you know, it's going to be, they're going to sell them in Best Buy. I feel insane. like it's definitely plausible. I don't know how. I feel like you could, there's got to be something. I feel like it's way easier than, than it, people make it seem. Yeah. Because mm. the problems that you have to solve are just kind of easy. I feel like all these, like every single print technology is easy at a surface level. But then you start running into all the little like edge cases and like kind of weird bullshit. Yeah. Like I remember, what was your first printer? Uh, CR10. Okay. Yeah. Mine was a Maker Farm Prusa ripoff made entirely out of plywood and it was a huge piece of shit and it made me hate 3D printing because mm. I had to start printing like four or five times every single time I wanted to print a part oh. and it wouldn't stick and then I'd have to get in there with like two pairs of pliers and try to adjust the little like standoff screw with like a double nut to like lock it in place and then it would oh, hit God. the Z. It was really bad. There's no like Z offset or anything. You do that all in the slicer. So then it's like you go in the slicer, but then by the time you get the slice settings changed, the machine's like heated up and started sagging even more. <laughs> and so it made me hate 3D printing. Yeah. I know a lot of people who started on like Annette's Annette A8. Yeah. Like that was like the popular like starter one like a long time ago. And it's like, it's basically in a like, a fire hazard oh, just like right in front of, of you it's it's I, so bad i think it broke immediately is it like the white one that kind of looks like a like a pyramid <sighs> all the ones i've seen have been like black kind of like plastic yeah. frame going yeah, around the top of it but i broke it really fast so like i have a friend who like was just like look how much of a piece of trash this thing is yeah. he took the bed you know like how if you move the bed enough like mm, the, the screen back. will turn on yeah. the man was literally like changing print settings like moving while the bed back and forth powered by while... moving the stepper motors yes that's amazing it's oh, really wow. bad I, so. but i feel like what has changed a lot is the software between then and now so like the software like the hardware and stuff has gotten better but it seems like the software has gotten like way better yeah like cura they make it so that like a 10 year old could look at it and be like oh that button says you know slice that it's mm. it's a lot easier than right uh, it used to be things. i remember using i think it was slicer with a three instead yeah. of yeah because good quirky uh <laughs> And just like all the settings you could change. And I was like constantly fiddling with it and like nothing worked. Like I remember I printed like a Yoda head and the uh, support structure was like permanently bonded to it. And I, I remember oh, spending yeah. ages and ages <laughs> trying to like peel, like really like rip off the support material. Like if it's a small little object and the support materials fuse to it, good mm -hmm. luck. You're always mm -hmm. going to have some weird. Yeah. But now I have no problems with support material. Oh, yeah. like it works so well. Yeah, basically just peels right off the part. Doesn't leave even like leave anything on the part underneath it. Yeah. So. Do you use a lot of support for yourself or do you try to work around See, it? See, the goal now has become use as little support yeah. as freaking possible. Mm -hmm. So like I have friends who'll be like, they'll take it as a challenge and they'll try to print like an Iron Man faceplate with zero supports and it'll be on like two little prongs or something. And they're oh. like, I did it. Like it's, it's kind of a challenge yeah. at this point. Cause then you also save material, but it's also kind of fun. And time too, like it can add, it can yeah. add like well, a shit ton of time. Oh yeah, support blockers have become my best friend. Oh, yeah. I, I like throw those, those I everywhere. That. I'm like, Psh, it's fine. It doesn't need that. We'll be fine. I don't care about supports on the outside of something, but if it's like on the inside of something, yeah. like a say like a port for air or water, and you have yeah. to like dig mm -hmm. the support out from inside of some tiny little holes. Can I show you what I did on yes. these here? I'll show you. I'm gonna get one. <laughs> So this is this gear that we've made nine of for this project and there is see the counter bore yeah so there's like a counter sink or counter bore on one side and then like a smaller hole on the other mm -hmm. side for the screw to fit through so the screw head will go into that counter bore yeah but the problem is they were printed like this mm. so the counter bore is on the bottom and so then what happens oh, is you no. print like a bigger you print the cylinder upwards of the counter mm. bore yeah and then you have to print all of a sudden now a tiny little hole yeah mm -hmm. and that doesn't work because then you have to have support coming up because when it tries to put the tiny hole you'll get over, some little spaghetti yeah, yeah, just yeah. Some spaghetti. so in the model what i did is i took like i made like a one millimeter thick or no like a point two millimeter thick layer that just covers that intersection between the small hole and the big hole and so you can see if you look inside it's bridged directly across yeah. and then it starts printing the smaller hole on top of that let me see this so if you look at the CAD model, you cannot actually see all the way through because there's a layer blocking it. Oh, I can see through. No, not that one. <laughs> but that was essentially like, I was able to avoid using support material. 
and having to pull it out by just that putting a thin nifty. layer. So yeah, I've like had things. Oh, like I see what you're talking about yeah, now. Yeah, there. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. So the printer is able to bridge across instead of trying to draw right. the circle uh, out. Ah, that's smart. And so yeah. you can you can scrape it out, or you can probably actually just drive the screw straight through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's so it works. Smart. Sometimes it works though. Like even if you don't have the support on there, yeah. like I've had things where I've forgotten to put support, and it's like an overhang, like a 90 degree overhang, and I'm like, huh, yeah. well, I guess we'll just see if this works. And it. it <laughs> What's the Jurassic Park? Like life finds a way. <laughs> I often print without any support and just let it do this strange, like, mighty <laughs> juggle thing until eventually, eventually, until it, eventually it catches it on top. I was Why? like, well, that worked. Because you, uh, you can do it. You can print into air this way if you want, William. Yeah. It just it takes looks a couple, like this. It takes, it takes a couple, a couple layers. layers. Yeah, Alex just does a quick prayer and it starts. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, please, please. <laughs> please, God, I don't want to change the it, file and it'll it, take me 30 it works, seconds though. to put a it new works. So it does. It kind of looks cool as well. <laughs> the spaghetti mess. Uh -huh. yeah, but then your part is going to be like weird and like a part of it's missing because you had to cut off all the spaghetti. You'd be yeah. surprised how quickly it can do it. You yeah. can literally like two or three layers will be printing it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> like. It is surprising. Like I've had like say like a helmet or something where it's like a, a dome, right? Mm. And originally the printer's like, I'm going to put support in the middle. And I've been like, no. And so it, it'll like. Mm. It'll, it can do it. It'll, like, it'll do it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of ugly, but it does it. <laughs> yeah, it's better than it being like overly optimistic with support, where it just yeah. it just tries to put it everywhere. Oh yeah, and you're like, really, like like on the outside, there's like a little thing, and it's like really, and it doesn't even like connect yeah. with it. It'll be yeah. like it's like it'll you know this stop. is gonna do nothing. Yeah, like why are you, why are you trying? Yeah, why are you trying to impress here. The tree computer? support is really nice on Cura. I Wait, like that. What's that? It's tree like, support. have you never used that before? No. It like it's, branches up and like goes out. Yeah, it comes up as up. like one little kind of tower. And then as it gets to the things that need support, it kind of starts moving over towards it. Whoa. So it, it really saves a lot of time. Oh, does it limit the amount of material? You yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it saves time and, and it it's way cool. easier to remove. It looks pretty cool on there too. Yeah. So you don't want to remove it once it's done. You're just like, mm, you throw your part away <laughs> and keep the tree support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure the tree I actually have had a lot of trouble with uh, resin printing, like yeah. like trying to get the supports right. Honestly, like everyone always says when you start out, you just like throw a bunch of them on there, like go mm. like way heavy with the supports. But now like I feel like I'm at the point where I'm still doing that and I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. So I've been like going lighter on it. But like getting them off, I'm, I've am i learned like use the heat gun and stuff. Mm. And they come off like oh, really? butter. Yeah. With the heat gun? Yeah. Because I was trying to print... Uh, my skull the scan of my skull that i have and it just like there's so many little details and so many spots where it's just like the, the printer can do the detail but it's almost impossible to figure out where all those low points are yeah and it's like it's so i have all i have a couple of prints and they're, and they're just filled with support material on the inside and you can't get rid of it because it's too yeah. embedded in there try to I've, I've seen people either dunk it in warm water mm. or use the heat gun to get it a little bit warm yeah and it it like the supports just like fold off after you do that. It's really nice. I should try that. I just learned that. Okay. What but happens if you print something on a resin printer and it's like you, it's like a sealed volume and then you have this like little nugget full of resin. Yeah. Does that ever happen on accident? I think it does happen, yeah. Like yeah. full of uncured like resin yeah. or yeah. just yeah. like. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I guess you just, it's just it, there. I mean, could, it cure, it cures like. It should print If it's paintballs. like a shell, it, it would. Ideally, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both yeah. Like you outside and inside. We're doing it now. We're having two conversations. <laughs> well, because you didn't listen to what I said. I said you could print paintballs, and then yeah. you could throw them and have little resin bombs. Yeah, but like if and it's then, printing, like, it though, everything would be and it turns yeah. into everything plastic. would be cured, right? Wait, I'm I, so I think Wait. Hey, this is what happens. It starts printing. It oh, doesn't you mean completely after, fill oh, up. Oh, I see what you mean. Yep. So it does drain out, but you end up with like a resin residue. And so once it fully seals and you try to clean it, the inside of the part is just filled with like, like the edges have like almost like a yeah, meniscus okay. of resin on it. And it just makes the inside of the part look disgusting. No, no, no. Think of like you're printing uh, a sphere. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I just realized we're it, wrong. It Why? drains out. Because it drains out. Yes. Because when you print each layer, it would then yes. it oh, wouldn't it, like, be able to rise up yeah. Yeah. yeah, you would it get a bit. Okay. Yeah. But you end up with still there is like resin you'd like still stuck yeah, to it. Yeah, it dunks yeah. the entire thing in. It's not like it yeah. goes. I thought like, it like started yeah. at the surface and went down yeah, yeah, or no, something no, like that. Uh, okay. But you do end up with a bunch of crap in it still. Gotcha. And so when you do then put it in the sun or put it in the UV light, it just it just it looks bad. You get like this weird surface yeah. finish on it. Yeah. Okay. Can you um do the same process but with like silicon resin? Resin? Does that exist at all? Some kind of like, 
like I floppy. No oh, I, I bet I guarantee it. That there would is. be cool. That's interesting to try to print though. Because like, you could print some cool stuff move. instead of molding stuff. I think it's tough, it. but not flexible. Like they do yeah. sell tougher materials. Like they have the TPA stuff for 3D printers, like that flexible. Okay. Have you ever used? It's like no, the no, no. I've seen, I've seen it though. That looks or cool. TPU. Yeah. TPU, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the, I think it's what they make Crocs out of, maybe. Nice. Is it? 3D printing Crocs. That's pretty good. I'm going to do that now. Is that re a resin printer or is that like, like that. a 3D, filament? yeah, filament printer? Oh, well. Yeah. Mm. I've, printed, like, I've like, never had good luck with that like stuff. That. Yeah, I mean, it looks tough. Now I'm going to go print me some shoes. Have you have do you done it? a lot of flexible parts? I have, like for okay. the oh. Iron Man suit They're stuff. Really like so if you want a flexible part and you're printing with What are you guys listening? Why are we having two conversations at the same time? The audience, you know, can we split it in left and right channels? That audience. Yeah. And then we can have two conversations Yo. and they can absorb one on each side. I was, yeah. I was listening to what you're saying while Kevin was doing it. I just okay, couldn't no, we're doing it. It's too late. The note's already in there. We're splitting the channels left and right for this part. <laughs> we're going to have two conversations. So they can, take they can get in one ear and they can get the other one in the other ear. Okay, well, he's talking about whatever he's talking about. Yeah, exactly. I was going to confuse so, the uh, with TPU. <laughs> you, yep. If I you ever, have, like, okay, the, so the yeah. extruder has flexible to be filaments? on the, yeah. the, the like, for what? extruder what you part. Like, flexible yep. like the motor has to be on the hot end. Otherwise, if you're trying to put it through the tube, like the boat into full joints, it's all like spaghetti up in there. Something like that. So you're not. Yeah, I know some people who didn't do that. And it was trying to push a wet noodle through a pipe. So you need a special 3D printer for it. I'm like, why would you want to live It's like one of two ways. They have like 3D printers with the boat in tubes or with like the gear right. Is it, how do you printed. move in the suit? Is okay, like, we're done. Oh, you're we're done, done now? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so now we have to, the poor editor has to undo and go back to the normal <laughs> timeline now. <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> That's uh, cool. You could get creative with that. Yeah. Splitting channels and... <laughs> the audience yes. is like... <laughs> giving the side, the which one? Seizures. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain is like just... <laughs> trying its best oh it's like goosebumps like choose your own journey yeah you know, to be like, oh, okay yeah. left oh. or right you have yes. to choose and there's a secret message you just pop you one earphone out yeah what if it's like the audience can kind of like decide what we talk about like if we do a live one mm. they can like kind of turn oh, us more in like, a direction have you have you we've literally done this before we looked at the q a section of the patreon discord and the questions they ask us there's a lot of good ones oh yeah that's a good point but <laughs> there's a lot of shit questions you guys <laughs> I feel like they're just trolling us at some point. <laughs> I but I, it's a, is it a level of shit that's too shit to even read out to be funny? Because there's shit which is just really bad. And you're like, okay, that's so bad. I can, I can use that. Here, we'll let the uh, non-Patreon only viewers decide. Maybe you have like an episode where you solely answer the really, really bad questions. Mm -hmm. And it, just get it out of their system, you know? Wait, where's the question? But then they'll, then you're egging questions. them on to do more. Maybe. Because yeah. then they're like, well, if I say this, I'll get <laughs> Don't William Osmond to read it out. Stop. It's so, time to stop. That's not even a question. That's the that's thing. The thing. Is they a don't even have their, their, like, they have discussions in here half the time. They don't actually want you, like, they don't even care if you answer the question on the podcast. They know that you can't. They just want to mess with you. They just yeah. want to ask yeah. you some really okay, stupid questions. Here's this Patreon exclusive on the non-Patreon. <laughs> Bill Nye versus Neil deGrasse Tyson. Who's winning? I Neil deGrasse Tyson he, would kick the shit out of Bill Nye. All the way. Me? Totally. Yeah, yeah, that's like, it's... A... <laughs> Does anybody disagree? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody have a Bill counterpoint. Nye. Bill Nye. <laughs> yeah, Bill, no, he, no, he agrees yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, Bill Nye is like this tiny, tiny man, and <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson is like a normal-sized man. Yeah. <laughs> um... Okay, here's one. Uh, hypothetically, you're going to brainwash a male model into killing the Prime Minister of Malaysia. What do you use for the trigger song on the runway to activate your assassin? And you can't choose Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Oh, uh, man. Megalovania. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not even a question. No. They just want to make a Zoolander yeah, reference. Yeah, they're like, they just want to make us read something stupid. Is that what that is? Zoolander Ooh, reference? Yeah, it's where he does it at the end. and says, actually... I'm glad steel you got and then it. Stops the oh thing. my god! Just does. Oh, I can't even remember that. Yeah. So we all know the opinion of cats in this server, but what do we know about cat girls? I don't like these questions. <laughs> these, are, these are trick questions. <laughs> these are bad questions. Yes. <laughs> People are really in support of that one too. <laughs> you guys no. are all fired. <laughs> this paints a good picture of your demographics. Yeah. <laughs> Nerds. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> you want to do you want to do, you want to do a podcast run by uh, community <laughs> suggestions? I feel like you should should do that at some point. All right, let's a see. A Patreon exclusive one. 
Let's see if we'll do. We'll go to best of questions. Like we're just giving all this, all these, all this Patreon exclusive for free. Just cat <laughs> no, it's done negative again. advertising. Like, why would I pay for that? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um. So here's one. Not a question. I just want to say it's really cool. You guys have been doing a good job posting weekly episodes for us. Thank you for posting a not question in the question. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Writes really like nice that was comment. A compliment and you're still burning them. <laughs> like, no, fuck no, that, you. that was in the best of. I don't even know how this bot works. Is Send, it like the most oh, upvoted? Oh. How does the best of bot work on the... If people give it upvotes. Six, if it's like six thumbs up or something or six yeah. responses. Six stars they get. Well, now you gave them the secret. I know. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take okay. everybody that, that thumbed that up and we're going to send them into timeout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we see a bot that deletes everything that's not got a question mark in it. <laughs> yeah, it just deletes everything. Yeah. All right. Do you find it annoying when people suggest videos for things you already have videos on? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Aww. Yes. You know what? People you ask know what? The one we get all the time for the Safety Third podcast yeah. is, oh, you guys should have Styro Pyro on. Yeah. Right? It's been on. <laughs> Literally, his face yeah. is, is just the thumbnail as well <laughs> with lasers going on. Do you get emails from people asking you for technical support? All the time. I get DMs, emails. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's so bad. Do most of them, it's like they haven't even tried. Oh, yeah. No, they're like, uh, could you? The most common one I get is, can I please have an Iron Man suit? I'll pay you $50 I'll, plus materials. Yes. A lot of times it's kids that clearly just found my email. A lot of times it's adults that are like, I would like to build Iron Man suit. Please teach me. It's like, it's not like I showed how I did it <laughs> on my social media or anything. And they're just like, you like, you ask them for like, oh, it will cost $200, like $200, but you were only paying $50 for the plastic. Yeah. Got you. That's the thing that I got somebody asking me if I could make them something. They're like, I'll pay you $50 plus the cost of materials. <laughs> I'm Did like, you, you, you know this took like two months to make this, right? Like, I'd be, yeah, I'd be that working was two at, months of allowance. That's a fair trade. That's like 30 cents an hour, basically, <laughs> if you break it down. Wow, that's, that's not even minimum wage. No, yeah, I'm not very productive with my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I feel like, like, you know, I don't know. If somebody's trying and putting effort in, I'll help them. Mm. But most people just don't even. Yeah, do most a basic of people, search. it's literally one line. It's like if they're trying to be nice too, you know, like yeah. a lot of them just put like one line, like, "Help, I would like this," mm. and that, like, that's it. It's like, on what planet do you think I'm gonna respond and right. be like, "Hello, yes, let me help you." What? Let me go out what? of my way and do a bunch yeah. of work for you for something that you haven't even tried to do yourself. <laughs> right, let like, me, like walk you through the conversation that you're trying to have. Exactly. Yeah. I, Another really good one I get is just when they steal other ideas that have already been published by the YouTube science YouTube mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And they're just like, why don't you see if you can cut off your finger with a car window? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then they've done it to your videos as well. Send me your exact title. And yeah. they're just like, why don't you do this? It's yeah. like, yeah. why don't you shut up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, just great of, but hey, you can leave a comment on the video. You didn't have to email me. Maybe they want yeah. a response though. That's yeah, why they're saying it. They're I just like, so. tell me to shut up or tell me to do this. Or... I mean, I always think that maybe they just want to see you do that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we spoke about that. Yeah. But they also, think you do a better job but also you can't do that because then everybody else is going to be like, you stole his idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Dude, I don't know. I, I remember when I made the wooden skateboard, like really early YouTube, like I think one of the first videos, um, people would ask to buy it and I would try to come up with like a reasonable price. And I'd, I was like, I think the price that I came up with was like, well, I could probably make like, you know, five of them a week. And so I would have to charge like probably like, you know, 150 or $200 each. That's a which, steal. Which is a steal now that I think about it. Yeah. And I almost like, I didn't even want to give people that price because I feel like they'd get mad. I think someone did get mad at me. No way. And I, yeah, and, I, yeah. and so I was because it is expensive. Like that, you know, two hundred bucks is like a lot of money for yeah. something like that. But also, that's how much a normal skateboard. Yeah, costs that's a lot of time. And those yeah. are just made on a right. machine. It's like just because you don't think it's worth that money doesn't mean that it didn't take me that m amount of money worth of time. It's just not worth buying at that point. Like just don't make it and don't sell it. Yeah. But I was afraid, you know, of being like, oh, well, here's a cheaper price because <laughs> it isn't actually worth that much. Like. Mm. But nope. it also comes down to how much do you want to sell? Because yeah. you could yeah. you could sell for a thousand and you might sell one a month, or you yeah. could sell it for two hundred and you might sell like ten a month. Dude, I've learned that money doesn't mean anything. It's just how much is somebody willing to part with something for? You know? Yeah. Like, well, I had a guy offer me fifteen thousand dollars worth of Ethereum for my powder actuated hammer. Really? And he was serious. He Ooh. was really serious about it. As was well. it the like uh, Australian? 
uh, the CI, probably, FBI yeah. trying, probably, trying to trap you. At the end you. of the video, I threw it, threw it away. So They're going to nail uh, you for manufacturing. Yeah, so they'll right. probably just like, hmm, maybe we can gather some evidence from this man. <laughs> <laughs> well, were, I didn't do it because I was just like, no. I, I did throw it away. So yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it if I wanted to. <laughs> I could I could make it for them. Yeah. They wanted my though, Kev. Mine. That was where the value comes from. You could make it here in America, actually. Actually, I could and then sell them. Yeah. I should make one now and then be like, is that offer still open, man? Yeah. Please. I think one of my favorite offers was the Tungsten Cube. I've gotten many offers and they yeah. pretty much have gone down exactly the same. Can you wanna guess? Do you wanna guess? Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you think? Somebody sending me an email offering to buy my tungsten cube would introduce the idea of buying my tungsten cube. Like I don't know. They in the video I said how much like, I paid for it. In the video I said I paid twenty two hundred dollars for it. I reckon they would say exactly twenty two hundred. They would say they, the same price. Mm. I don't know. They, they offered me the scrap value. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought they. It, and you know, one of the guys said I should find the email because it's really funny. He said, "Oh, it's got some scrapes on it, so I, I can't really give <laughs> oh, you the full God. price. So I, I could offer you the scrap value." It was like he was literally like trying to undersell me on my <laughs> own thing. Yeah, he was like, "Yeah, you know, oh. what you have is kind of garbage, but I still want it anyway." I was giving yeah. people the benefit of the doubt. I mm. thought they're like, "Oh, since this was used in his <laughs> video or something, maybe." Every single person has offered like way less than what you could sell it on ebay for right. to be fair you didn't add much value to it you That's, just you, you should have responded yeah. like <laughs> okay i did i did no i would say like okay i'll take your money and i'll I'll give you like you know you know 200 bucks worth of scrap tungsten yeah and if it's yeah, and then and send it to like a box of scrap, a tungsten, scrap tungsten or something yeah, yeah and just piss them off <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just like you know like you like it's just such a waste of time where it's like are you serious right now yeah like you actually think that that is a reasonable offer like why? Why yeah. are you sending this email? Like, I, I get some. I get them for the battle bot as well. And oh, people, yeah. they always, they always have an excuse of like, oh, well, it looks like it needs a lot of repairs, so we can only pay you. You know, I think like, I, I'm not selling it. Yeah, I, like first yeah. of all, a, I'm not selling yeah. it, and then you come in and tell me that you're gonna give me like one fifth <laughs> of what I paid for. Like, I think someone said like two thousand dollars, and I was like, I, I got it oh. for a steal. Like, this, I paid six thousand yeah. dollars for it. Like, that's a steal for what those robots cost. Yeah. I've had it's people... a lot easier to repair something like that too yeah. Mm. yeah than to you know do it from the beginning yeah i've had people ask to buy stuff i've made being like oh i'll pay for whatever the material cost is and that's it Whoa. they've literally yeah. been like oh yeah i'll pay for material cost and everything if you send me blank have you and ever it's like have you sold what? anything ever? no not no it's I... not really worth it unless it's not really worth it you... no like I don't know. No. I'm not going to go sell something I worked a couple months on or even like a week on mm. for. What about like, do you have a bunch of old stuff that you've like made like little things or like, oh, you could maybe sell like failed prints or something. Maybe people like have mentioned that because I, I have like a bunch of failed stuff and people have been like, why don't you like get like put them on I'll a stupid little base or something like that. Yeah. People have been like, I'll take it. I, I feel kind of bad like selling them something that's like. No, they probably failed. just want it for like know. the, you know. Maybe. Hmm. Okay, here's Maybe one. I thought about it Here's though. one. I found it. Uh, an email. Me and my friends have always loved BattleBots and we're wondering if we could buy yours, the Red Devil. How much would it cost? And I said, what is your offer? And he said, what is the lowest price you would consider? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> then he replied, um, this is probably just a joke, but what about $3,500? So it's like. <laughs> at least that's kind of close for some yeah. kids together. That's he, not that it's bad. It's not horrible. It's not that's horrible. That's not horrible. Uh, and then he replied after, immediately after and he said, also, I'm not guaranteed that I'm going to buy it yet. It depends on how this plays out, the cost to enter, and if I get accepted into <laughs> well, the tournament. Well, now that he yeah. made it offer, yeah. he's like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like $3,500 is maybe too much, even though, like, if, if he had been selling the BattleBot when I bought it for $3,500, it would, I would not have thought twice about it. No. I would have just, because that is actually a steal. Like, yeah. you could take the parts off of that robot and sell them for for that amount of money. Mm -hmm. Like, all the drive, the motor drivers and the motors and stuff like that. Here's what you could do. You could rent you could lease him the battle bot yeah and then oh. you could sign a contract saying that you get like 50 percent of the winnings mm. so he's like working oh. for you except he loses and he gets destroyed <laughs> dude you could totally uh, just start a company where you lease out battle bots yeah as Probably. like party entertainers like just gave they, someone yeah, an idea awesome. yeah it's it's really you bring good. it to their house and then they destroy you, you stuff like for an hour like, yeah. and you could probably charge like a thousand bucks an hour i think you could yeah yeah to, the insurance easily. policy would have to be very big oh uh, yeah yeah, you yeah i would probably if i was a kid my parents pay for that i'd shit myself oh yeah i mean not regardless i shit myself but <laughs> i would have actually shit myself on my birthday <laughs> i wonder if i can find any more of these like there's just or maybe i, I can I, find the tungsten cube ones 
I get a ton of them. Yeah, I get so many. I just it's gotta be kids. The Tux yeah. and Cube ones, I think, were the most disrespectful though, because it was just like it was like your cube is trash <laughs> and it's not worth anything. <laughs> I was but let me buy it anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much would you sell uh, an Iron Man suit for? How long does it take you to make one? It depends. Like the last one I put together in three months, but I killed myself doing it. Have you ever that. sold it one? I haven't sold okay, one. Okay, so this. Okay, what do you think you would charge? Don't, well, we're, I feel like we can work through it after. What do you think you would charge? A th- would you do it for $1,000? Would you no. sell it? No. It, it takes like $600 worth of materials. Whoa. So like. $750. <laughs> so at so, least start with like $1,800. It, honestly. I, I wouldn't sell it for anything less than 10K. That okay. sounds crazy, Whoa. but so, like- see, That's the thing is that sounds crazy. No, that's now. not that crazy. Well, like, now. Look up how much yes. a real I one I spend is. like six months working on it or oh, something like that, yeah. like yeah. for a reasonable amount of time. So ideally I'd probably like yeah. sell it for more. I posted a video about that one time and there were actually a lot of people in the comments. Normally people are like, oh, what? That's too much. But there were actually people in the comments that were like taken up for me yeah. being like, actually six months worth work at yeah. least charge like 30 or something like so that. Like people yeah. were like, that's like $400 a week. Yeah. yeah so not, not including materials. So like if you're working on this thing for six months, mm. that is not a lot of money. Like yeah. imagine that's what oh, I'm you, saying, can, yeah. you can make two a year. So you get twenty what twenty thousand dollars a year, and then you subtract twelve hundred dollars from that for your material cost. I always yeah, hear that's... it's like the price something like that. It's like the material cost, like double the material cost plus time and labor mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So that's like you know, a lot. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's, like people never take into account the labor no. aspect of it. I think like everyone mixes up the idea of like the price of something at Walmart and the price of something that's been made once. Right. It's like mass manufacturing yeah. and single, yeah. like one-off manufacturing, like completely different things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people assume whenever you like make a prop or something like that, when I say, oh, it's 3D printed, they go, oh, like you just shit. printed it and now you can send it to me. No, no, no. I mm. spend like hours sanding stuff, yeah. you know, like yeah. it takes. I, I think another yeah. massive difference between the two is that when it's mass manufactured, Chinese labor is very cheap. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. little slaves to do no, it. No, seriously, it's like, very cheap. Yeah. yeah, very cheap. Like, what? I yeah. wonder how much they're actually getting paid per hour to do it compared to like an American worker. It's it's, probably, it is much. It's probably cheaper. like a fifth, a yeah. fifth of the price. Yeah, like yeah, it's maybe even more. They're also much more efficient too. Chinese like, people. It, well, no, I mean like the Chinese manufacturing <laughs> yeah, economy. Really? I mean the people. Yeah, technically, <laughs> but like it's because the infrastructure is is built. Yeah, you know? it's like oh, all yeah. the shipping's right there. All these companies are right here. You can like yeah. easily bring in materials. Yeah. Like imagine, like I'm trying to think, what is America good at? Farming. Farming, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So now imagine it's like if you take a farmer and you give them another thing that's related to farming, they're probably going to do a good job. And yeah. it's the same as like manufacturing is such a like a big thing in China mm. that if you want to manufacture something, it's like they're not actually cheaper. They're just way better at mm. it and way more efficient. And the whole city's set up for yeah. it, so they have exactly. everything they need right next to each other and yeah. can move it right. around. And so it just it like inherently becomes cheaper. Yeah. I think it is actually it is cheaper, but it just is much like. We've, we've tried to, we are currently working with some factories to make some stuff. And it is actually astounding how much of a better job they will do mm. and how much easier it is to work with them and how much mm. cheaper it is than trying to find an American company. Yeah, it's yeah. streamlined. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. people say, oh, it's Chinese, it's crap. But it's like, no, mm, no, it's not. It might actually be better a yeah. lot of the times. So yeah. like, well, I learned that with bike parts because you pay like $5,000 for a carbon frame yeah. if you buy it from a Western com- uh, company. But they literally just buy the frame for five hundred dollars, put their brand on it, and then upsell it. And yeah. it's exactly no. the same frame. Yeah, that should be illegal. And people are like, "Oh, the Chinese stuff is shit." It's like it's, it's like all Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. It's China. all Chinese. Yeah. It's just like the American stuff might actually be the shit thing. It's yeah. kind of sad. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like, row. <laughs> <bro. laughs> I what else is America good at? Like building stuff, maybe, but blowing, like blowing kids up in other countries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very good at that. Yeah, I think we're the best. I think we're we might the be one. We're the, we're the best. I Russia, I think Russia's giving Russia's us a run good. for our money right yeah. now. But, yeah. <laughs> they're competing. America. <laughs> but like historically, we probably haven't killed that many kids in the grand scheme of civilization. No, probably not the most. Probably like some of the like. I bet know, there's somebody that has a pretty good answer to this. Genghis Khan, maybe. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Why are we going just mm-hmm. children? Or people overall. I think children. Children are sort of like a the good, kind of untouchable. Like you're yeah. really not supposed. Like to nobody do that. was really. You know, yeah. Like, like you really can't. Yeah. There's no justification for for killing a kid. So it's like what country sort of has the loosest ethics where they just like I could see yeah. some ancient time. Yeah. Where it's like cold. they come in and they just kill everybody. Are we doing per capita or just total number of children? I think total. Mm, that is a good question. Oh yeah. 
I bet com- total, like, we're yeah. nothing. We're not even, like, on the radar. Yeah. Of like, yeah. I feel like some pretty horrific things have happened in the past that yeah. we don't really understand the full scale. Yeah. Of. Like, like we've dropped a lot of bombs in World War II, but that's like, I know, I know. I mean, that's like you mm. know maybe a million kids. I don't know. I just like you think about you think about like all the like stuff that's happened recently, like with U- Ukraine, and then you're yeah. like, wait a second, didn't like in the 19 like 40s or when did we drop that? 40s? Six, 60. Oh, with the was nuclear bombs? Yeah, yeah, no, that was 61 like or 64. Was no, it? No, it was no, 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 no. It was like late oh, 45. 45. No, 45. Yeah. 45. It's not 45. Um, yeah. and like, that kind of seems pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Like, really bad. Like, yeah. really bad. And that was bad. like 150,000 people instantly yeah. dead. Like, that's probably w- the worst thing that America's like, ever actually done. Yeah, uh, 100%. I yeah. think so, yeah. And they, like, the way they teach about it here is kind of like, we we had to do it to win the war. Yeah. It's guess. definitely yeah. There's definitely some sort of like. It's just weird to think there's ever a justification to instantly eradicate yeah. 150,000 people in a second. Yeah. It's just. I do think that it hasn't happened since, which makes me gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah. Of well, everyone realizing well, this what is you, actually really bad. What about like all the drones? I've heard that like America's killed like, you know, hundreds of thousands of civilians. Yeah. In the iraq war like in the middle yeah. east recently is have it that you many? heard it's getting so the wars used to be 20 percent civilian casualties 80 percent soldiers yeah the new wars are 90 percent civilian civilian casualties no way yeah. wow it's because they're fought in urban areas now not on battlefields wait so it's just mostly, like in general wars just in general in, like in or... general wars now are mostly civilian casualties i'm actually curious of like a, an outside perspective of america because you sort of get to witness a lot of the uh the media and politics without actually having it affect your daily yeah, yeah. i mean I don't, I don't think america is is, is it, i think there are some great things about america yeah. like i obviously love coming here i think that people are great but i think internationally you guys are very shit uh, <laughs> i'm gonna give it to you and straight I do, like, and, I, and i don't think people like america that much yeah. as well like overall it's like i see on reddit a lot of people like it's kind of a meme to talk shit about america it is it but is. i don't know like how true that is like in real life yeah, I think it's it's hard because if you ask Australians what they think of America, oh, so it is, they would honestly be like, mm, I, I, don't, I don't know. Should we end this with like the Pledge of Allegiance or something? <laughs> Do you want to learn the Pledge of Allegiance? I don't know it, yeah. Okay, okay put your hand over Okay, I pledge allegiance. No, this, my this, heart's on this side. I pledge allegiance. Oh yeah, you're, you're I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, of the United States of America, and to the republic for and, which it stands, and to the republic of which it stands, one nation, one nation, under God, under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, with liberty and justice for all. Did I do it right? Yeah. America. It's probably yeah. been. 15 yeah. years Whoa. since I last said that. You remember all of that? It, I'm telling you. We had to do it every single day. Yeah, we'd say it every day in Throughout. school. Dude, they Elementary don't give school, a middle shit. school, it's, high school. Wait, when do you do it? If you don't school? learn your fractions, they don't care as long before as you know the Pledge of Allegiance. Before first period. Like before the day starts. That's pretty mm-hmm. North Korean-esque, uh, <laughs> honestly. Yes. I mean, yes. everybody feels the same way. No, one's, no one here yeah, debates yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I kind of want to ask Chelsea if she does the Pledge of Allegiance. I think, are they? do they have to do it? I don't know. I don't know if they do it anymore. Do they still... They might still not, do it? No. We no, did all like, the way through high school. Uh, I think maybe. Yeah, I did. Well, I went to a military high school. Yeah, oh, yeah. So we definitely did. We had a school song, which was kind of cheery and funny. That's cool. We all had to oh. sing, not before every class, but before our assembly. So on Friday morning, and that was fun. Speaking of fun, That's so wholesome. You should, uh, if you want to see us drive a forklift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go subscribe to the Safety Third Patreon. Help us pay for these live podcasts <laughs> help us pay for our medical bills <laughs> and the damage after to they drive the forklift <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a forklift yeah. shape <laughs> <laughs> all right see you on patreon <laughs>